Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to the Butcher Circus, and today we're going to be playing with a full horror comp. So I just thought, well, I want to have some fun today, what do I do when I want to have fun? Well, I play stress teams, <laughs> and what stress teams are the most fun? What gives you more dopamine than watching crit 21 slams into a bounty hunter and having like 40 horror stacks on the enemy backline? Well, nothing really more than that, apart from maybe like uh, Hounds Harry crits, I, I do very much love that, but they were playing the Kalashnikov, uh, the Kalashnikov, but instead of having a Hound Master for the Hounds Harrys, we have an Antiquarian for the Nervous Tab. So, two crit slams right at the start, it's gotta be one of the first times I've actually seen that, that's quite uncommon. Crit slam into crit slam, that is really funny. Well, I probably want to drop a bellow here immediately, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. But yeah, we have an Antiquarian and her Nervous Tab, well, not a lot of people know this because not a lot of people use it, but her Nervous Tab with the Ghoul Claw Trinket actually applies more horror when you use the, the melee attack. And it's not a lot of horror, I feel like it should be buffed. Uh, I know it's kind of a niche trinket, but it should be buffed. One thing that my opponent is playing this very well, going for the pull now on my Occultist, went for the slam on the Man at Arms, even though the Man at Arms doesn't mind being in the back, the Occultist minds being in position 3 because then he can get pulled, so definitely well played by my opponent there. They are uh, of the veteran rank, but they are definitely playing this quite well so far. I'm gonna go ahead and... <laughs> get another crit. Jesus, I've gotten two crits with my two abilities. I can get crits. That is actually wild. So many crits this match. You know, one of the first things I, I thought about the circuit is that I don't feel like you should be able to crit in round one. That's uh, kind of sets the match off a bit, a bit too hard right off at the start. So I was like, nah, you shouldn't be able to do that. But, uh, you know, here we are. One thing I'm thinking of is that I cannot guard because Hans Harry and uh, yeah, I was thinking like move back, they shoot me, I guard, but it doesn't work because there's this and you know, there's this too. It really wouldn't work all that well, which means I probably just have to do this and hope that they don't do 8 damage with, um, with the buckshot. Quite unlikely, I imagine they'll do 8 damage, but I'm hoping they don't. Did I not drop a bellow? I mean, I did, but she dodged it somehow. That's actually BS, and they get to push on my abomination, but not on the occultist. Okay, okay, I see how it is. This is already going quite terribly. Hmm, there really isn't a lot of ways I can salvage this situation. I could have dropped the rejuvenating vapors round one, but I didn't feel like it would be necessary. But you know, I guess I should have because now I'm just gonna have to drop this. And uh, sure, the musketeer might have taken a lot of stress, but I'm down on the cultist already, and I wasn't really able to apply a lot of horror, which is what I wanted to do in this match. But oh, oh, oh okay, that makes things different. That changes things, makes things different. What is the single ship? Yeah, I mean, there's still two finishers here. He's probably still gonna die. Let's be honest, but. I could guard, but after that there's just a slam and I still die. Yeah, I don't really, I like, sure that buys me a little bit of time, but it's probably not going to save me. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the problem here. It is probably not going to save me. I'm just going to go ahead and drop uh, a beast file here so they can't drop a Hound's Harry for free to, to just get the kill that way. If they want to go for the kill, it has to be an abomination action, so they either have to rake, which, you know, it's fine for them, but it's not amazing. Or they have to go for the transform stun, which is definitely not amazing because they're just hitting my one character. So yeah, now they have to go hunt rush. Wow, I'm still alive. Would you believe that? That's actually wild. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop the bell now. It's gonna be a little bit of wasted stress on that musketeer, but that's okay. Yeah, the, this occultist, he's been he's been surviving. He has been surviving. He survived. What was the hit chance on this? Honestly, not very good, because I wasn't even marked anymore, so the monkey spot really saved me there. It was a 60 to hit and a 75 to kill, so that definitely helped. And this was a 50 to kill, this is going to be a 65, and yeah, he finally goes down. If he had survived that, I would have been able to get another action off with him. It should have been really cool, it meant I could have probably just dropped the take cover now, and after their action, uh, nah, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't be able to reach it in time. It would have been fun, but no, it wouldn't have worked. Uh, at this point, I'm probably just... I could guard here, I could genuinely guard, but they have 60, minus 60 damage, I don't feel like that would be too smart. Yeah, I could go ahead and drop a protect me, that would uh, keep my entire team like very solid, but I feel like just going aggressive here is going to be better. Let's put the pain onto this bounty hunter, make him drop to that star, and then I might drop the guard, yeah. But I want to bellow first, you know, I still want to bellow. They have minus 60 damage on this uh, musketeer, I really doubt they do a lot. Uh, that's the self hit, that could actually help. 
She's getting quite low on HP, that could make the difference here. I do have 30 prot on the mana arms because of the Pit Fighter's Helm. So that is going to help me out a little bit. She's going to go for the heal. She gets a crit on it, of course. Mm, that makes me want to drop another Nervous Stab, but I'm probably not going to do that. I'm just going to drop the bell here, keep reducing that damage. Good thing about playing against the team I'm playing against is that they don't have an Arbalist or a Crusader to flare those uh, to flare those Bellow debuffs. So every single Bellow is really hurting them. They're already down to minus 60 on every one, which is a big debuff. It's massive. I think that the best thing my opponent can do right now is quite obvious. They have to go for a stun on my Antiquarian, because I was greedy and went for a Bellow first, but I felt like I should do this. That shouldn't really hurt all that much. Yeah, that really doesn't hurt all that much. They don't have any accuracy buffs. Well, at this point, I'm probably just going to drop this, right? Uh, ah, probably not. Just go aggressive. Yeah, just go aggressive. I'm going aggressive here, because even if I drop the guard now, they can still focus my Abomination down, because I'm going to transform and go for the slime after. Uh, they're gonna do call the shot now. They're probably they can't use collect bounty on me though. That's the thing, and they can't even use Hounds Rush because I'm I'm not gonna allow them to use it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I, I will say I've been getting quite lucky with the battle debuffs. Applying them on the Hound Master, he has a lot of uh, a lot of debuff resistance. But let's go ahead and slam the abomination to the back. It was a 35, so that was definitely on the risky side of things. But here's a problem with marking with a musketeer for these two chumps is that, well, you can't Hound Rush in position 1, and even if you could, it sucks, and you can't collect Bounty into position 3. When, even if you could, it does it does hit quite a bit, especially with a setup like this, but it still sucks. <laughs> it still sucks, in my opinion. And here comes the Selfish. Oh, that could be good. That could be good. That could be an immediate pass. could also be something like a Mark for Death on my Men at Arms. It's not the weirdest move, but it's also not the greatest one, I must say. I'm just going to go ahead, de-transform and bile here, and then my plan is going to be to bile, bellow, and then guard. I want to use my Men at Arms action before I use my Antiquarian guard, because if I don't... <laughs> excuse me. One turn of the guard will go away right this round, so I do not want that to happen. The reason I really want to drop a bile here first is so I don't waste that uh, juicy stress I had on the Abomination, he would, I would have wasted like 30 stress had, he, had I let him get his action off. That wouldn't have been too much fun. Now he can transform again, but I no, I don't mind all that much. I mean, I kind of do. I'm kind of getting close to afflictions here. Masochistic with the finisher, that could make a difference, though. He's not close to that story yet. He's going to go Harry into the past. I have a damage buff. Yeah, I hit him pretty hard for 7. That's, that's good. Uh, that's decent. Let's go ahead and drop another battle debuff here, so the damage debuffs are just going wild. This Man of Arms is saving us the match. My opponent's team is nice, definitely has some cool ideas to it, managed to bully my occultist pretty hard, but in terms of dealing with the battle debuffs, it can't do anything. How much damage does that do? Zero! Once again! Man, this has been an hilarious match. Every time I think my opponent's gonna do damage, they just roll for zero. It's quite funny. Well, I could drop the guard now, but honestly, why not go aggressive instead? You know, why not go aggressive instead? I feel like hitting the, the Houndmaster here, honestly. Oh, with a crit too! How much stress is that? Yeah, 14 for 4 rounds, that's pretty good. That is pretty darn good. That Hound Monster is essentially dead now if you don't heal him. You're also having a terrible time. 42 stress, by the way, that's the reference. It's the number of death. Ghost finish him into the repost <laughs> to get synergy from the days. Oh, I think my opponent has just lost it now. And what's that do? Be smile into the repost as well. Oh, jeez. The hits for six, though, not that much. Yeah, I mean, I say not that much, but the repost really shouldn't hurt. Well, I guess. You know what's coming, right? You should know what's coming now. Yeah, it's gonna be another battle debuff. These bellows just completely destroyed my opponent's team. Someone asked, like, how strong is bellows? Bellows still really, like, the strongest thing you can bring. Uh, it's like, is it the, the paradigm of the stress teams? And yes, it definitely is. Damage teams like this just do not stand a chance against those bellows. I didn't even see it at, at the start. I thought that this was just going to be, like, a good old stress versus, versus damage match. Uh, that uh, the bell would be helpful, but no, definitely not game deciding. But no, the bell was game deciding. Even if they hit those abilities, which they didn't, they just kept missing over and over and over again. They still didn't have too much fun. So what's the what's the take on this? What should have my opponent done differently? Don't bring call the shot. Bring ranging shot. Give yourself accuracy. God damn it! Call the shot sucks. Never use this ability. Anyway, let's go on for match number two.
All right, and here we go for match number two. This time we're playing against All for One, One for All, so quite an interesting name. This is a Darkest One opponent. I haven't faced them before. Maybe they have a new name or something of the likes. Maybe this is a person that usually doesn't play at this time, something like that. Those things do happen. Some people ask me, Chap, how come have I never played against you? And, uh, and I play in the ladder all the time. Well, maybe you don't play at the same time I do. But I'm gonna start off with a slam miss onto that Hellion, so... Uh, that's uh, that's a very good start. That's a very good start for me, but yeah, this is gonna go into an exposed crit. Oh boy, yeah, this match is gonna be a whole different thing than it was the previous one. I can see that much already, but hopefully my occultist doesn't get focused on as much. I could try guarding here. That's a very interesting Arbalist, though. What's the idea behind this team? Is it bleed synergy for the Hellion? And crits? Uh, it's definitely a weird team, I will say. My opponent, my opponent is very happy, I, I think, but I'm just gonna start spamming the Bellow debuffs. I could guard here, but I honestly feel like it's not worth it all that much, because even if I do guard, my Abomination's still getting focused down here. It really sucks that I got hit with 10 Exposed, means I'm gonna get take crits like crazy, but all oh, they are gonna go for the common header after all. And they get another crit, so crit number 2 Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> after I missed the 85 Slam, yeah, I almost forgot, but uh, do I want to regen here? If I regen, they will bleed out, which could miss. Could. Could miss. It could also hit pretty hard. I could also go for a pull, which won't really work all that much. I'll regen, I'll regen. I think it's worthwhile. Yeah, I think it is worthwhile to drop a regen right now. Their bleed out will probably miss onto my onto my occultist, so... I don't really mind it all that much. Now they're just gonna go for the abomination. No Fs given, just go for that and uh, daze themselves at the same time. Okay then, so be it. I could go ahead and pull this bounty hunter to prevent caltrips, also make the shieldbreaker kind of be in a weird spot as well as the hellion. Could go for a pull there which will likely fail, uh, I'll just go for the bounty hunter here, he's a very important character. Let's pull him to the front where he doesn't really want to be right now and sure, if the Arbals wants to shoot me she'll probably not get the kill. Emphasis on probably. I mean, this is a support Arbalist with a Velo debuff, and she still hits me for 22, which is a lot, but at least I'm not dead. Not yet. Uh, I'm thinking of. I cannot stun. I'm thinking of I cannot stun, because if I do stun, the Arbalist will just flare the Velo debuffs and the stun away, so can't really do anything like that, which kind of sucks, but you know, that's why the Arbalist is a better character than the Musketeer. The Musketeer is nice, but the Arbalist is better. They're gonna flare. They don't flare the debuff from the bleed out, but they flare everything else, which uh, is definitely a smart move. I could go ahead and slam again here, but I feel I have a feeling I'm gonna have to do a self heal. One thing I could do, though, is drop yet another Rejuvenating Vapors, so though. I probably Probably won't make too much of a difference at this point, so I'm just gonna go for a nervous stab on the bounty hunter. He's taking a lot of horror already. There was one transform, one pull, and one stab on him. So the bounty hunter should be getting to almost afflicted, honestly, <laughs> just from the horror here. We're gonna go for the breakthrough. They hit for six, which isn't enough, and they daze themselves again. <laughs> I love the daze. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, they're probably gonna puncture. What? A shield breaker without puncture? What is this? What is the nonsense I'm seeing here? That's wild. A shield breaker without puncture, huh? That's a first. That's a first. Well, I could go ahead and slam here, but I'll probably die if I try doing that. But I'm still gonna do it, because I want that Hellion in the back, and if they try hitting my Abomination, I can just go ahead and stitch and embrace and it'll be fine. Sure, they can expose, but... Uh, yeah, I'll still be able to heal myself for a little bit. Are they gonna go for it? Straight for it, right? Straight for the abomination with the pierce. Get the crit on it too, come on, make me hurt. What are they gonna do here? They have a very interesting team. I mean, this is definitely not their main team. This is the darkest one play. This is the darkest... Yeah, Pierce, of course, with the crit. This is the darkest one player playing Hellion. They're probably just trolling around a little bit, but... Still quite an interesting thing to see. We're definitely gonna go for the stealth here, and they're just gonna drop a caltrips, I imagine. And it does does work a little bit. Or they could drop a yeah, they're just gonna drop caltrips now that they have the chance. They didn't get the crit on there, interesting. 
I had a feeling they would, but I suppose they didn't. And now I can go ahead and drop a pull on the Arbals. Is that the idea here? Do I want to drop the Melody buff first? There's a few things I want to do. Let's drop the Melody buff, then we go for the Antiquarian action. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just play like this. I don't feel like dropping a regen here would make... Another regen would make too much of a difference, so... Let's just do that. Sadly, missing the Shield Breaker even with the UEI, but, you know, what can you do? She's going to go for an Impale, actually. Uh, that is not gonna get the Blight, <laughs> because there's no Justice in this world. I love it, there is absolutely no Justice. Doesn't get the Blight, so I get to go for my action here. Hit the Occultus, I'm gonna go for a pull on the Arbalus, and we get a crit on it, nice. She can go for the Bolo right now, she definitely can, but come on. Is she is she gonna go for the Bolo Death Blow? She, she's gonna go immediately for it, I really doubt it. Oh god, mistakes are made. Mistakes were definitely made. My abomination is now gone. My uh, occultist is gonna die shortly after. I think that was a misplay, Shepherd Doggy. I think you misplayed this horribly, and you're gonna lose a match because of it. Yeah, I definitely will. Ah, uh, my abomination should have stayed alive there. I should have gone for a weakening curse or something if the likes. My abomination being dead here is gonna lose me the match now because oh no, just another finish and dodge. I don't know why people are running bounty notice heartseeker today. It's it's not good. It's not good at all, and it goes for the breakthrough here on my occultist. He actually stays alive, meaning I could try and save him, but they still don't have period puncture. I could guard here if I really want to. No puncture, huh? It's so odd. It really is odd, isn't it? They can go for the breakthrough, but I could drop a regen before they're able to. Unless they flare immediately. But I still think it's worth it. I'm gonna drop the guard now and just take it from there. This is such a weird setup. No puncture on the shieldbreaker just sounds so odd. Because shieldbreaker has an ability that you always take. It's puncture. There's no matter what, you always take puncture. And my opponent just doesn't. Which is really, really weird. It makes me think that they're, <laughs> they're not trying to win matches. I mean, playing Hellion is not trying to win matches, but you know, at least you're playing a character trying to play with the best possible. But... Oh my god, the RNG has turned. The RNG really has turned, that's actually insane. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a Rejuvenating Vapors here. If they want to go for the one-shot, then they will, they will probably get it. In that case, I might have to drop a Stygian Embrace there, but I have to drop this just so the Breakthrough doesn't come with a Death Blow. Because we saw the 25 happening already, we don't want the 25 happening twice. We definitely do not want that. After this, what, I, what my plan is, just spam a this artillery. That's what I really want to do here, just spam the Abyssal Artillery like there's no tomorrow. They're gonna go for the Pierce, they do 9 damage, that's a mineral, that's very good for me. Maybe, maybe the mineral is 8, uh, not entirely sure. But let's start dropping those Abyssal Artillery. Sure, I could drop Stitch and Embrace, and that would probably make sense if this was a, a Festering Vapors Antiquarian, but she isn't, she's a Nervous Time Antiquarian, which is definitely worse, it's just straight out worse. But, you know, it is it is what we're playing with today, and I guess I just have to play with it. Now the Hellion's just gonna drop a breakthrough here, and give, gonna give me... Ah, uh, it would be a choice, but... Uh, no, it is a choice, actually. There's an Impale. Hmm. Oh, no, that's really bad, actually. I'm still, I'm still marked here. Yeah. I'm still marked. If I don't, uh, if I don't go for my anti crane action, she might just die. I have to then. I have to risk the 25 here. I have to go for the take uh, for the take cover here just to get rid of that mark. Because if I don't, it would just be a 55 and I cannot risk it. They're gonna go for the 25 and the 5 and they don't get either, thankfully. Very thankfully. I resist the blight again. I mean, I do have 80 blight res now that I'm guarded, but I didn't have 80 blight res before. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this bit of artillery. It's gonna be very, very juicy with all the stress it's doing. Yeah, these two characters are not having a fun time. I just have to drop like another bit of artillery, maybe get a crit on it. Oh, paranoid, she's doing zero damage from now on. Yeah, she's doing absolutely zero damage. And yet another paranoid, so even less damage onto her as well. She does have the bleeds though, so... Uh, it doesn't uh, doesn't really prevent anything from, from happening. This sucks so much that my abomination died so early, like you really shouldn't have... You really should have survived, dropped a... <laughs> They're gonna go collect a bounty. You should have survived, dropped a, a heal, maybe a crit heal too, if I was lucky. And then uh, just drop another transformation, everything would be just fine right now, but no, it did not happen. 
Heck, do you imagine the other transformation on top of this? I would just join the match on the spot. Really sucks to be me. Now, they go for yet another flare here. Makes sense. You always want to clear those debuffs. They cannot hit my, my Antiquarian. She's fine at the moment. What I will do is I will stab that uh, Bounty Hunter. I'm definitely going to stab him. I resist the debuff and the bleed. Wow. Razor pin resisting the bleed. Okay. That is wild. That is genuinely wild. Well, let's go ahead and click here. And I could no, I could take comfort again, but I'm just going to go for the snap with a crit. Oh, the RNG. Man. Why am I getting so lucky? Why was I not this lucky like during the tournament or during the matches that actually... You know, like two players playing with the Manta team. So why am I getting? Why do I get lucky when I play the Shinos comps? <laughs> you know, that's my question. Why do I get lucky when I play the Shinos comps? That's what is happening right now. I'm getting lucky when I shouldn't. Okay. Um, I'm thinking whether I want to keep the guard up or not. At this point, I think just Bellwing is going to be better. I still have a bit of region on there, so let's just drop the Bellow. Huh? And, oh, he's almost gone. If there was an act out there from these two, he would, uh, he would be dead on the spot. The Arbus is definitely gonna, gonna go for a heal here. I don't think there's any world where you don't. And, okay, first it's gonna be a Pierce. Goes for the 20, doesn't get it. Yeah, that death Deathly Resistance is definitely, <laughs> definitely being vital here. And I'm gonna drop a pull onto this Arbus now. And we do get it. That's very good. Yeah, we get it. She has less move resistance now. 36 horror, by the way. Is that stress? No, she moves back! Oh wow, she moved back with the Paranoid, but missed the Sniper shot because I got the crit buff for extra 10 dodge. This match, this freaking match. Okay, it's gonna be that. Oh, I stay alive though. I stay alive, barely. I am barely alive here. Do I click and regen? Or do I go for my Occultist action? I think I click and regen, right? Yeah, that's what I gotta do here. I'm gonna click region, go for the stab on the Arbalist, and uh, yeah, she's taking a lot of harm now. Okay, you're gone. Extra stress, extra stress. Oh, it would be really nice if I got to Bello here, but uh, she's if she goes for the killing shot right now, she will die. But if she doesn't go for the killing shot right now, she will also die to a Bello. Gonna go for the Pierce, gets the 40. Goodbye, Occultist, you did very well. And now I'm gonna go for the bell. I still think I'm gonna lose this because I don't know how I'm gonna kill that stupid shieldbreaker, but now she's dead. And you're close, you're close. You are also quite close. Uh, shieldbreaker, come on. Irrational. Oh, that's so good. Okay, that might save me the match here. That might save me the match, but I don't know how I'm going to kill this damn shieldbreaker. It's, <laughs> it's really not obvious. I wish I that did extra stress to the Hellion. That would have helped me out a ton there. But yeah, I have to kill a shieldbreaker, and uh, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. Now she goes for the damage buff there. I could go for the stab. Or I could go for the regen here. Either way, I'm in a rough spot. A very rough spot right now. I have very weak characters. Oh, I missed the bellow. No, that can't be happening. I can't be missing the bellows. Not now. Hmm. I need to get like a crit nervous stab here. Something like that. I might have to go protect me as well. Now it's gonna be the impale now. I'm not in danger though. I'm not in danger, Skylar. I am the danger. Yeah, I don't have to go for the protect me immediately. I could go for a stab here. Also go for a stab there, which is just a miss. Uh, I could try to heal. Mm. Let's go for the stab here. Yeah, it misses. Ah. What can I do? Yeah, I really don't see myself winning this one. Unless irrational and paranoid just. <laughs> just really help me out here. I don't see myself winning this one, but they really have to help me out right now. Goes for the bleed out. Oh god. Yeah, minus death blow resistance on there too. That's really bad. I have, I have 30 death blow resistance on my antiquarian, by the way. Oh god. Okay, let's drop to protect me, right? Uh, yeah, let's drop to protect me. Come on, man at arms. You have to stay alive somehow. <laughs> you have to survive. Please, Irrational, I need a pass. Oh, the self-mark from the Irrational. No, not the self-mark. Goes for the Pierce. I stay alive, though. Wicked Attack's gonna kill me. Unless... Unless we get a Paranoid Act out. Can I... Can I please hit the Shield Breaker? God damn it. Okay. She just had a heart attack now. Maybe Nervous Stamp kills, then Irrational, like, 10 passes in a row and I win. Oh, breakthrough. It's gonna have to be breakthrough with the double kill. Oh god, yeah. That's over. I did one fatal misplay, which is pulling that Arbalist into my abomination, dying, and 
without the abomination, I just can't kill these two annoying buggers. So yeah, big GG's to my opponents. Hope you all enjoyed today's matches. Definitely play this team. It's it's fun. I think it's fun, but oh, it's just lacking something. It's just lacking. It, it feels really good though. When you get those crit nervous snaps for 18, yeah, it does feel quite good. So hope you all enjoyed today's video. I'll see you again another time. Cheers.